Looks like we are live. Hello and welcome everyone to the June uh, Stuck on a Bucket uh, webinar. I'm Fritz Wickern um, and I'm joined today by Brad Green and Scott House. This month we will be discussing uh, a little bit of BQL, Baja Query Language, and uh, a few different ways to use it in Niagara. Uh, so we'll go through go through some of that. At the end, we'll have some question and answer time. Um, but as we're going through, as always, throw uh, questions in there uh, as you have them, and uh, we'll try and keep an eye on that and uh, answer them as we can. And as always, we've got... Uh, a Yeti cup or some sort of prize that'll go out to one of our lucky attendees. So keep an eye out for uh, your emails to see if you're a winner uh, after the webinar here. So let's get started. Um, I'm sure everybody's probably heard of BQL and knows, you know, it stands for Baja Query Language and has used it in some form or fashion uh, in Niagara. Um, it's used often programmatically to search for specific data within your station and return uh, groups and tables of data for whatever you need. Uh, it's similar to SQL, but not the same and uh, has you know, more limited functionality. It's extremely useful though, to quickly create tables uh, with whatever data you might need for point checkout uh, or to see what points might be an alarm at the time. Uh, if you're working with a tab contractor, uh, it's an easy way to go out and search your station for all the VAVs that uh, may have min or max flow set points set at a certain value. Uh, you can use these queries to pull quick da table data for you know the commissioning agent. So a lot of good options there for using this. Um, and there's a couple of different ways of, of using that BQL. Um, so having a good working knowledge of uh, not just using the, you know, program version of setting up that BQL, but using also the text string uh, edits uh, can be very useful. So, uh, and also some of that string text is used in uh, several of the Vicon Pro modules. So, uh, all right, let's move on. We've got, uh, let's see. Come on, there we go, slideshow. So for a connected station and workbench, um, user has a couple options for getting to that query setup. One's through the file menu, open and query option. Um, this will bring up your BQL query builder dialog, which then allows the users to define the criteria for what they want to search for. Um, searching by name, searching by uh, alarm status of the point, um, a whole lot of options there. So the uh, of type selection allows the user to specify the extent of the BQL query. Uh, in this case, if you're looking for specifically a numeric point, Boolean point, uh, that type of information. Um, under there, you've got the choose columns area where you can specify kind of your projection of the BQL query. Uh, or you narrow it down. Um, and then that match area lets you specify the predicate of the BQL query. Now, once those uh, search is submitted, it pulls up a generic table view of it. Um, alternatively, on any of the screens, you can also get to a BQL query in string format um, by using the ORD and uh, doing the either file ORD menu command to get there or on any of the screens using the control L hotkey. Uh, this will open a dialog and then let us directly enter that BQL query as part of an ORD string. Uh, the BQL query itself determines the columns in that result table. Fritz, can you go back one uh, one slide? I wanted to point something out. Um, yeah. That's uh, really helpful and it's the, uh, the little clock um, underneath your BQL query builder, there's the save icon, the edit, and then there's a the little clock, which is your recent BQL queries. So yeah. Those are really handy. Um, the BQL is based inside of the station that you're connected to. 
like you saw on the ORD path that's on the next uh, screen there. So when you're connected to a station, you run that query, it's going to query, you know, that station relativized to that or relative to that station. But if you use the clock and it's, uh, you're always querying, you know, numeric points, um, you connect to another station, uh, you just need to run, rerun that same query and it's going to be there for you. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Great point. Thanks, Brad. So next we're gonna move into a little bit of a detailed kind of breakdown of, of how that BQL statement um, looks if you're using it in this string format. I think most everybody's used to uh, probably doing searches for using it in the you know uh, batch editor and things like that, but this is useful to you know use it in a string format. Um, you know, as I've learned from my days here at, uh, at KMC, a lot of folks you know, are more comfortable using line code and, and formatting this way. So um, the first part of the statement here is the base org that the query is being applied to. Uh, so your search results will only be components that are children of that base org. Um, and on a side note, you know, object or org is an object resolution descriptor, uh, or it's basically, right, that Niagara URL for objects inside the station. Uh, so if you've got a large university or multiple buildings, um, you can really kind of define down where you want to search uh, here in that base ORD part of the uh, statement. The next part of the statement um, is our, you know, select portion of it. So following that, we <clears throat> define what data that we're going to get in our query. In this example, we've got, um, you know, our parent by parent name, name and out value. So these will be the columns in our results table and will be filled with any data points that match uh, our query. Uh, this is B format, so it's similar to what you would use like in PX animations, uh, allowing you to grab data by using those slot names. Uh, if you really want to get fancy with that BQL, uh, you can use scalar functions. Uh, like some out value that will then combine multiple results and you can have some different different options there. Moving on in our statement, the next part is kind of filtering and refining our search. Um, so this is just used to kind of narrow that down. Um, in this example, we're using the, you know, from control numeric point. Uh, in the string format of this, you know, statement, uh, it's not always necessary to do that, but it's just useful as another way to kind of help narrow it down if you're getting uh, more results than you would think. Uh, it's just another way to uh, this, help refine it. And this uh, using the from clause here and the extent there is it will really speed up your BQL query because it's selecting from a, a lesser table. So it's like in this case, control numeric point, but if if you have a specific object type that you're looking for, if you specify that, if you're trying to make your BQL queries faster, um, restricting that right. down will make it much, much faster. Nice. Perfect. So our next part of the statement allows us to get even more specific where our, our query results, right? So we're, in this example, uh, telling the query that we only want data from points that have the name space temp. Uh, removing any results that met the conditions up to this point uh, that don't have that name. So it's generally where most folks spend most of their time to kind of filter that data out. <clears throat> uh, the syntax for a lot of this is documented um, in a couple different places, but one, you can access it using that control L to pull up the, the board dialog here. Uh, and then going into the doc developer uh, BQL expressions. So our next piece of the statement, uh, our final piece here is optional, but it can be useful uh, if you're pulling table data, you know, for the tab guy or commissioning agent, uh, and you want to sort it in a particular order. Uh, in this case, we're sorting the results in the table uh, and we're using that space temp values to sort lowest to highest by using that syntax of order by out value ascending. Uh, 
Uh, you can do this sort of by descending, uh, you know, there's different methods there. Uh, other options include sorting by group uh, or by name, group results uh, that have the same word location. Uh, there's really kind of endless possibilities for uh, building out these BQL statements. So this is just a result of that query that we were building that statement. Uh, here we've got the device name, our point name, and our value uh, of all the numeric points in the MyStation that have the name space temp. Uh, you can also see there, right, the results were all sorted in ascending order. So uh, usual uh, quick, quick way to grab some of these table data um, or if you're looking for alarms or if you're looking for maybe uh, temperatures that are over 80 degrees, uh, things like that. So now we'll move on and we'll kind of look at some different um, query examples for alarms, uh, histories. So some of our alarm query examples that can be useful um, are using, um, you know, a point name, a point status, uh, where that point is actively in an alarm. And our second example there, um, we're looking in, you can see in the, the statement there, the ORD is actually looking in our alarm database. And it's going out and pulling alarms based on those conditions um, to meet a certain timestamp uh, and then sort those alarms in a descending order. Uh, and then that last little example is just going to display a table of all the alarms in the station. So that wildcard star at the end there will uh, grab everything so you could get a whole long list but again it's an easy way to kind of uh, use that control l pull up that dialog and then uh, type in some of the stuff to get that information quickly all right so we'll move on we've got some history query examples uh, there's really kind of a whole lot of uh, Samples you can do this way, similar, you know, you can obviously go through and sort histories uh, through your history database manager, right? But this is just another way to uh, go out and look for zone temp trends that day. Uh, then the second example there also will show you all that histories in the station. Uh, so moving, kind of expanding on these history query examples, uh, we've got an option to Come on, there we go. Do like a two column uh, result. So in our top example there, we're looking at our history uh, database, right at the beginning of the award there, we've got the history. Um, so we're saying this query will return the data from a history in two columns. So it's adding syntax there um, after the timestamp. We're naming that column by saying as timestamp and then as temperature, uh, which will give us that result data table uh, with the named columns. Uh, and that's useful in the cases where uh, maybe your property names, you know, don't quite match up with what you want to have displayed in the table there. Um, you know, we learned earlier uh, that the base ORD portion of the station um, directs where to pull that data from, right? So in the first uh, example here on this page, we're actually uh, telling it at the end of the statement to pull from my station, my uh, zone temp log. So we could alternatively been more specific and you throw in that my station, my zone temp log uh, into the beginning org, um, and then just done the BQL select timestamp value at the end. So. Uh, a couple different methods there for sorting that there, uh, multiple ways to kind of uh, skin the cat or get to that data. Next, we'll take a look here at uh, period modifiers, so date ranges for histories, right? Uh, it's just some different options to uh, do your BQL query, your search, and say, I want to look for the last seven days, last 24 hours. Uh, lots of different options. And again, it's similar, you know, to obviously how you would manage that data through the, the uh, uh, database management tool. 
Next, we'll look at a condition of the where statement, right? So this is useful where I want to find uh, trends that are uh, tracking in you know a range between two certain values, um, and that's where that where statement is useful. So in this first example, we're looking for histories that had a value between 60 and 70 degrees. Um, so we've got it specified there, right? Where value is greater than 60 and value is less than 70. Pretty straightforward. So the second hour or second example, we're only going to get results uh, that are during the 12th hour of the day. Uh, looks like I got a little typo there, but either 12th or 14th hour, uh, you know, uh, you can specify. So if you're looking for you know, data that happened uh, at a certain time frame, uh, maybe when a, you know, know, chiller came on or an event happened that you need a specific information for, uh, you can use that timestamp hour function. We've got a few more uh, where statement filtering options. Uh, these are just lots of different options here of looking for a specific day, uh, hour, minute, second. Uh, depending on how precise or specific you need to be. Um, but with the where statement, you can also look at status. So you can look for uh, if it was disabled, faulted, uh, overridden, and so on. So our next function we'll look at uh, is going to be our like operator. Uh, so in this, you know, some queries, the data results uh, are going to come out in text format rather than being, we've kind of been looking at points that are come out in a numeric format. So this would be true in cases where we have uh, properties that are two string or timestamp uh, to date string. So in these situations, we need to use that like operator, uh, which will give us a search and it's um, looking for values uh, within the month of September, but with those, um, you know, wild cards in there, the either using you know, your star or your parentheses symbols. Um, you can use those to kind of help uh, give it a little bit looser so it's not in a specific uh, exactly going to match up to September uh, to go out and find results there. This next one we're going to look at are some uh, roll-up values. Uh, this one's a little bit, you know, trickier, but it is an option. Um, it gives you, you know, the ability to evaluate collected values uh, to determine a minimum, maximum, average, uh, or sum of values. Uh, that can be accomplished through program objects, um, performing BQL queries, and then you scroll through the table of results to uh, perform those math functions. So alternately, you can add a special function of the BQL query which will do that math uh, and adding uh, ahead of time for you. Uh, so it's the same functionality that's provided in the history chart interface for data rollups. And um, really, I think if I were gonna be doing some of this minimax, I would probably just go to that history chart interface, but there is this option here. Um, there's no mechanism to uh, filter the return down to the specific columns in this case. And that um, about wraps it up, at least for what I had in here. So uh, you've got resources within uh, the uh, Niagara station. So if you can look at your uh, module for doc developer, there's BQL, there's BQL expressions. Um, and the doc developer, um, there's official BQL examples. Uh, so it's useful to go out and grab some of these documents, kind of plug and play through there and uh, see what might work for you, what might work for uh, finding data quickly for you know, your commission agent. So uh, let's see, let's open it up. Do we have any questions coming to the chat at all, guys? I didn't see any questions. Okay. Does anybody have any questions that's on the call? Actually, I don't know if they can... Somebody's getting ready to ask Oops. a question here. There's a, also a inside of the palette sidebar, if you go into the report jar, 
um, in its palette. It's got some examples uh, built in as well. Um, you know, so if you have, if it's your first time trying to set up some BQL grids, you can use those examples and they're pretty helpful. Sounds good. All right. You have one question there, Fritz. Uh, let's see. I can't see the chat. How do I get that to pull up? Says, and I'll see what the question is. It says, do you happen to know how many filters for specified fa faucet on the station via the query menu? I do not know that off the top of my head. Brad, do you by chance know off the top of your head? Uh, let's see. Let me read the question here real quick. Um, you have to probably get the facet in the result and then parse it. I don't know exactly how you would do that. I can look into uh, I can look into yeah. that question and certainly send a response out. Um, yeah. And uh, is there if there's a specific facet that you're looking for? Just go ahead and edit, enter it into the chat, and I'll be happy to set one up in a demo station and try with that specific example. Right. You see the second. I know in that uh, the BQO. Uh, is there a way to construct a BQL query to get the list of all devices on the station along with their MAC address, instance number, uh, and model number? Yeah, the uh, yeah. yeah, if you probably the fastest way, um, and it depends on what type of devices they are, um, where that uh, where the query uh, where Fritz was showing where you're restricting it by the type, if they're all backnet devices, you can filter that query down on just backnet devices, um, and then it's only going to return the backnet devices in that station. And then you yep. give the columns. Um, let me see if I can. We got some time. I can maybe do a live example here. Let's see what I got in my stitches. I've got mine over here. I got some in my station here too. So. You want me to present? Sure. Oh, Let's see. I can do a quick example of that. You able to share your screen now? Uh, it looks like it. Here, hold on. Let me see if this works. You good there? Yep. Yep. Okay. So I got. Uh, let's see. I'm in my backnet network, and you want a list of all the devices in the station. So if you're anywhere in the station, I'll just go back out here, open a new query, and it's going to search all the config. Now you can specify the custom type if you wanted to come in here and say that it's a backnet. Uh, you know, back that device and, uh, you know, pick that specific type. Um, let's, uh, let's go with a component variable, or we can do just the back net devices. Um, first, let me find, I think I have mine set up as KMC devices. We're just going to bring in the types back here. So, okay. oh, yeah, KMC backnet device. Uh, so, when you create that query, 
that one's going to come from one of our modules because it's a KMC backnet device. There's my KMC backnet device. And for this, I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm just going to leave it all stars so that when you see that that comes up and it's going to give me all of my devices in the station and all their information about them. So there's the address. And we could then filter that down to just say instead of doing star, I just want to do the name. I guess we'd have to see, you can only access what is presented here. So you can get the network number and MAC address and whatever's in the actual property sheet, you know, is what you're going to be able to grab. So I'm not sure exactly where the I mean, model number itself uh, would come into play, but if it's a property on there in the return set, you know, you can find it. So the best thing to do when you're kind of looking for those queries on the back one, you know, this star query um, is going to give you everything that's related to that device type. So that that query result is going to give you all these columns. If you start with that and then whatever you want from there, just put it down, you know, inside of here. So where I restricted that down to the name and the address. Uh, all right. Can you do uh, grab the award for that? Do control L, oh, and yeah. copy and paste that uh, search there into the chat. I think that's the one Jason was looking for. Yeah, I think I got it in there now. Hopefully that helps. Perfect. Let's see. Matthew, can I EQ a query, find all points that are faulted? We're down in a station. Uh, yep, that's definitely an option um, I have a, as far as looking for the, the status. I have an example of that set up, actually. Um, I created, like, some checkout, you know, grids here. So, if, like, you, like, if I look at the AX property sheet of this BQL grid, uh, maybe it's better to... Go through. So it's selecting everything in the station, um, giving the slot path award, um, and as the value, or and then the out. So the slot path award would be column one, and then the out value is value, um, and then I'm taking it from a control point where the status is overridden. So then if I uh, look at the grid table of that, you can see that those are my overridden values. Um, did the same thing here for the alarms, any point that's an alarm. So it's pretty much the same query, uh, but this is where the status is an alarm. So if I look at that one in the grid view, there you can see my, you know, one object in my station that's an alarm. And then I just do the same thing here, but at the end, I'm doing an OR statement to say if it's down or it's disabled, or it's stale, um, just multiple conditions. Um, and then it's going to return those objects in the station that are that are down, disabled, or in fault. And the nice thing is once you set those up, you can just copy those you know, BQL grids and save them in a bog file or a pallet and drop them into your station, drop your whole, you know, like I put them underneath the checkout forms folder here. I don't know. 
Uh, you could put a PX view on here and then just drop that folder into every station that you do and just open it up and do a quick review of, and it's going to give you all your points and override alarm down, disable, things like that. Yep. Uh, looks like we're about out of time, but maybe that's something we can uh, look at on our uh, on our next webinar because that's a good point, uh, Brad, of being able to reuse those uh, forms and queries from one job to another. Uh, so that'll be a good option there. Yeah. Uh, all right. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate everyone uh, jumping on the call today and joining us. Our next webinar, I believe, is on Friday, July 26th. So uh, be on the lookout for uh, an invitation to that. And uh, again, thanks again for everybody joining. Thanks again, uh, Brad and Scott, for helping out here. And I uh, hope everybody has a great Friday.